Hi guys, and welcome to the first in a series of YouTube question and answer session. In these question and answer sessions, I'm going to be answering the questions that you submit me. So if you'd like to get a question answered in one of these question and answer sessions, just leave a comment below and uh, I might answer it in the next YouTube question and answer session. So to kick things off, I've got a really good question from one of my Facebook readers called uh, Guno E. And he has asked, why can you use a melodic minor for a D Lydian dominant? And uh, you know, I'm asked this question quite a lot. There seems to be a bit of confusion about melodic minor and Lydian dominant. Are they the same thing? Are they different? Can they be interchanged? So I'm going to be answering that one in today's question and answer session. So when you're dealing with this kind of thing, uh, you know, Lydian dominant and melodic minor or any kind of uh, scales, what you really want to do to start off with is strip it down to the basic chord type. So A melodic minor, that's a minor sound, a minor seventh sound really, or a minor major seventh, but fundamentally a minor seventh chord. So first let's just think of A minor. Now D Lydian dominant. Well, Lydian dominant, that's a kind of a dominant seventh sound really. So if you're stripping that down, we really want to be thinking of a D seventh sound to start with. So we have an A minor seven and a D seven. And the significant thing about these two chords are that they are both in the same key. A minor seven is the two chord in G, in the harmonized G major scale. And D seven is the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. D seven comes from that, so a two and a five chord. And um, those that know about jazz guitar and have been playing a little bit will know that a two and a five chord are very similar. And in fact, jazz guitarists often interchange them. And uh, numerous jazz guitarists have already talked about this in great depth. M. The Remler has a fantastic DVD, I think, called Advanced Jazz Improvisation, in which she goes into a lot of detail about this. Uh, Ted Green calls this the companion minor concept and uh, Pat Martino calls this minor rising the dominant concept and all you basically do is inter interchanging, swapping between these two chord types and I could probably do another video about this in a lot more depth but this is just a kind of a quick question and answer thing. So the first step in really learning this concept is to practice interchanging these two chords so I'll probably put on like a, an A minor 7th backing track and then I start to use inversions of a D7 chord and you could do the same thing put a D7 backing track on and then use A minor 7th inversions and that will really start to help you connect these two chords together and you'll also have twice as many inversions if you think about it if you're playing a blues in B flat you can use all your regular dominant 7 sounds and you can also use some of your F minor sounds as well so it's going to give you twice as much chords and it's going to give you twice as much lines as well because all your lines over the minor 7 chord will work with a dominant 7 chord. So that's the first part to the video. Now we get onto the extensions melodic minor and Lydian dominant. So A melodic minor let's just play that at the 5th fret starting here on the 5th um, fret of the uh, low E string so we're going to go A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. That's an A melodic minor scale, which most of you will already know, I'm sure. Now, if we play a D Lydian dominant seventh, all you have to do to play that is actually start on the D, which is the one, two, three, fourth degree of the A melodic minor scale, and continue playing up it. D, E, F sharp, G sharp, there's your um, sharp 11, A, B, C. So to recap again, that full D Lydian dominant scale goes D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C. And there you have it, a Lydian dominant scale. So both of these scales are exactly the same thing. They have exactly the same notes. Um, so you can actually interchange them. And what I do is rather than think of just, you know, Lydian dominant, I learnt melodic minor scale first, it was one of the first scales that I learnt when I started learning jazz guitar. So because the melodic minor was the first scale that I learnt, I'm quite um, fluent with playing that out of the neck in different keys and stuff. So what I'll do is if I'm playing a tune and I, if, if I see um, a Lydian dominant chord like a dominant 7 sharp 11, I'll just think of the A melodic minor instantly and I'll, I'll just use that, I won't really actually think Lydian dominant at all basically. 
So that worked for me. I mean, you know, it's, it's probably worth practicing MIDI and dominant in its own right, but you know, I'm kind of lazy and both of these have exactly the same notes. And um, so I, I'll just kind of think of one thing, but I, I really recommend um, getting fast with interchanging the two and the five chords. So what I'd do if I were you is I would um, get a tune, any tune you're working on, it could just be a blues and B flat. And for each of these chords, I'd think of the, the uh, melodic minor that's a fifth up. So, you know, like in a B flat blues, the first chord it's B flat seven, B flat is your root of fifth foot from that is um, F. So, you could just use the F melodic minor and play that over the first B flat chord. And then when it goes to E flat seventh chord, you think a fifth foot from E flat is uh, B flat. And then you could think of b flat melodic minor over the e flat seventh chord then you're back to b flat you can do the same again so that's what i would do i wouldn't really think of the lydian dominant scale per se even though you are in fact actually playing that but it's the same thing as melodic minor so i hope that's answered your question i hope you found this video useful if you have found this video useful please give it a like and uh, subscribe to this channel for more free jazz and blues guitar related lessons um, if you do have any questions that you'd like to see me answer in a future question and answer session, please just uh, leave these below here and I'll consider them all for the next session. So uh, thanks again for checking out this video session. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you next time.